You're watching the Bearcat Network. Today's Tuesday, March 3rd, and this is Cat Chat. I'm Chris Sabata with my co-host Kip Ione, bringing the news, events, and an inside look at Bearcat Athletics. Let's jump into the roundup and take a look at what happened this weekend. All right, the final winter sport. Our season uh, wrapped up in, in the Northwest Conference semifinals. We'll dive into the year more later and digging deeper, but uh, unfortunately we fell at Whitworth, defending league champs. They, they ended up winning the conference for the ninth straight year. Uh, lost on the road Thursday, 89-64. Uh, stage was a bit big for us, you know, for the first time being there in such a long time, but it's a great feeling, especially for our young guys uh, getting that taste in their mouth and wanting to get back. And for our seniors, uh, it was a great, great reward for getting to that point after so many years uh, failing to advance there. So uh, very happy with, with how it ended up. Yeah. On the tennis courts, uh, the women uh, lost to Whitworth 8-1 in that loss. Uh, Denise Poltovsky, uh, she won. Her, she was a lone uh, winner with the, the 6-0, 6-0. So she pretty much dominated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she's, she's pretty good, and uh, hopefully we'll see more good things from her this year. Uh, they're currently 0-2 uh, in the Northwest Conference. Okay. On the men's side on uh, Sunday, uh, Lewis and Clark came. We played right out here on the sunny, gorgeous day in the tennis yeah. courts. 8-1 um, loss uh, to Lewis and Clark. Uh, Gunnar Lee and Jacob Blaisdell uh, won 8-4 in the doubles match for the lone win, and uh, the men are now 0-2 uh, in the Northwest Conference. On the links, golf, uh, Coach, P Coach Patrick and then the guys and the women got out uh, to Willamette, uh, the Willamette Cup at the Quail Valley Golf Course in Banks, Oregon. Uh, on the men's side, that's a win for us. Willamette finished 17 over uh, on top of Linfield at 20 over in Pacific, 58 over. Clark Wilson tied for first at 2 over uh, for the tournament, and he was also named Northwest Conference Athlete of the Week, so congratulations to Clark. Uh, on the women's side, uh, finished in second, uh, okay. right behind, right about 15 strokes behind Linfield on top of Pacific. Uh, Tanise Shra. Tied for first at 11 over, so absolutely oh, two great individual performances, yeah. and both those teams are going to be strong for the year. Uh, Coach Doherty's got some some great outlooks. We'll probably talk to them later on in throughout the spring season. Yeah, softball. I uh, was at, up at Whitworth this weekend. Uh, in tough, Spokane. tough, tough weekend in Spokane for the ladies. Uh, 3-0 loss, 9-5 loss on Saturday. Uh, on Sunday, came back with a 3-1 win yep. in the first game, uh, spurred by a two-run homer by Miranda Ramirez, who we'll talk to a little Absolutely. bit later, uh, and then 11-0 loss uh, in the second game. They're currently 1-9 uh, overall, 1-3 in the Northwest Conference. Tough Early. start, tough yeah. start, but uh, they played a lot of good teams. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think we'll see some, some good things yep. from them yet. Uh, on the baseball diamond over at George Fox, uh, Bearcats swept the first two games on Saturday with an 11-1 win and a 6-0 win uh, and a 6-4 loss on Sunday Their afternoon. First of the year. First of the year, uh, and it was a close game. Uh, those, uh, I think Fox scored three or four points in the later innings uh, to, mm -hmm. to take the lead. Uh, they're currently 12-1, 1-5 uh, in the Northwest Conference, and Tyrus Kuhn was the Northwest Conference Athlete of the Week. Congrats. Yeah, he's batting. Uh, over the weekend, he batted 545. That's pretty good. That's, huh? really, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's doing what you're supposed yeah. to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, and he's uh, he's 395 over the season, man, so they're, they're uh, rolling. They are rolling. Okay. Digging deeper, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about men's basketball. We're gonna wrap Absolutely. up the season. Uh, we were up in Spokane for the Northwest Conference tournament, mm -hmm. first time in many many, many years. years. Yep. Um, Since 08. Yeah, that's a yeah. It's that, crazy. It's been that long, isn't it? So. Let's talk about a little bit about the stage, and mm -hmm. you, you said it was maybe a little bit big, yep. bigger stage. Um, now you, we've obviously played mm -hmm. at Whitworth before, yep. and and they draw a good crowd mm -hmm. no matter mm -hmm. what. Yep. And so now we've got a big game. Um, is it was the crowd different, or is it more that what they're playing? You know, for? I think the crowd was huge and loud as always, but I think it's the level of the, the intensity in the game is ratcheted up. Even mm -hmm. though, like you said, we've played Whitworth before, we've played well up there before, but they, you know they've been in that postseason. Mm -hmm. They're they, they're used to the win in advance, lose and go home man mindset. And I think even it's not it was wasn't bad officiating. It's just different. It's a lot more physical. Mm -hmm. They let a little bit more things go naturally because it's the postseason with the best teams playing. And I, I think just th there was a run about the. Eight minutes into the game, and we went from up five to down double figures, and it was just, you know, they pressed that button mm -hmm. that we're trying to get to, and we just couldn't respond in that little spin. That was a difference in the game. After that, it was an even game, but that little run that was kind of a, you know, we've been here nine straight times. This is your first time. Here's how you're educated, which, you know, we, we're due to get, and that's fine. Right. You know, disappointing at how it ended, but once again, very happy with about the season. What is, what's the mindset of the players after that? Were they disappointed but content so. with I the season? I think, it, you, know, I, you know, we talked about, you know, Major League. Yeah. The, the movie ends, they win the play-in game. They don't show that they lost the playoff series. Right. Our movie ended against Pacific. Yeah. We won and got in. Uh, you know, we won't remember that game as much as we'll remember the achievement of getting there. Right. You know, I think that's a testament to our seniors. So I think our guys are sad because the seniors are gone now and we don't get to play with them again. But I think there's a, there's a ton of hunger to get back to what, you know, kind of get back to the table right. like we were. 
So what were were we were we looking at now? What you know the the good the, we lose Kyle McNally all conference inside on the post, which is a big loss, especially defensively for us. You know he set the school record with block shots, was a national leader in block yeah. shots. He's uh, kind of an unsung hero. Absolutely, too. you know he's a guy that makes all conference and doesn't score by any points. That's yeah. a testament to how much he did for us. Y other you things you kind of look through the stats and yep. whatnot, and you don't know th you don't know he's really right. there, he, but yep. you'll notice it next year exactly. when he's not oh, there. There's 11 rebounds, five blocks, and a couple steals missing. Absolutely, you know I think we'll miss Joseph Jackson and Talanoa Smith senior leader. Just guys that, hey, I'm a senior and I come off the bench, but I give it everything I have and I mentor the young kids that replace me in the starting lineup. And even a guy like Robbie Gibbs that set the tone in practice, like, hey, I don't play much, but I give it everything I got in practice and make you better. So we'll miss that, but I think the stage is set. Uh, we, there'll be different expectations. And you know, I'll be shocked right. if they pick us last again, you know, with four <laughs> starters back and a lot of the rotation back. So it's different expectations. We're not going to sneak up on anybody. Mm -hmm. People are going to be like, oh, Willamette. They're going to be like, oh, Willamette's on the schedule. we got to bring our A game. So that's a different focus for us getting ready. And how do you manage expectations? I mean, obviously, they're thinking they're mm -hmm. we did it had a great right. season. We're going to come in next year and we're going to win mm -hmm. it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard not to oh, have that. How do you control that and control those emotions and you say know. we just need to do the work? Great and point. Uh, you know, I think part of that is you know when you you got to when you you got to be honest with them. You know, we're going to hey, here's our record. We did some good guys. We still finished under 500 overall. You right. Know, we did eight and eight, which is great, but that's not going to get it done next year. I think it's a, a lot of film. In the exit meetings, like here's what you can do that was awesome this year, but here's what you got to do to get better for next year. So I think that's part of it. And then there's there's some other things we can find, social media, some motivation, <laughs> some memes perhaps, yeah. and some videos. But we got a good. It's going to come down to the captains. You know, Bubba Ludke's going to be a senior. Bridger Harlington's going to be a senior. Uh, how did they set the stage in this spring? Even you know, we gave them this week off, which was like pulling teeth because they wanted to come shoot. But starting next Monday, w are we going to act like a playoff team that gets prepared, or are we going to be happy with that and sink back down? Because you know, there's a lot of other teams that are hungry to do what mm -hmm. we did. So what is, uh, what are they doing in the off season? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a combination. There's a there's open gyms, obviously, where they're going to play. But really, in the offseason, we'd like them to do a ton of individual workout, whether it's in their position groups, like all the point guards. Go work out together. Yes, mm -hmm. you're together, but you're working on your individual skill set. And then there's lifting. You know, I think there's one thing that we learned all season uh, from the three teams we didn't have a chance to beat, Lewis and Clark, Whitman and Whitworth. They're bigger and stronger, you know, and that's where we've got to catch up in the weight room. And I think our guys are, have done a good job um, t up to this season getting stronger. we got to take another leap forward. Uh, so it's a combination of working out on your own, getting in games that are competitive, not just with your girlfriend and co-ed leagues, um, and also lifting your rear end off. Right. Uh, and I think that's where I can post some things in the locker room, some lopsided <laughs> rebounding numbers, maybe some pictures of some <laughs> opponents, you know, anything, anything to get them motivated to take that next step. Right, thing. right. So uh, season's over. Are, are, are the players following the tournament now? I think they'll follow Whitworth. You know, I know I will. They mm -hmm. got shipped to uh, Georgia. Uh, which would have been a fun place to go, um, but uh, I think Wh we'll which is ironically probably an easier trip yes. than to Texas. Yes, it is, especially <laughs> with who they're playing. You know, Direct they're flight, yeah, they're go to Atlanta. The Emory's right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between games, go to CNN, the Coke Center, and yeah. then go back and play. But I, I think Whitworth has a chance to do some damage. You know, as much as we're rivals during the season, you want your league to do really well. Mm -hmm. You know, a team like Whitman had 20 plus wins and didn't get a sniff at a bubble, and I think they deserved one. So that's on Whitworth now to carry our banner, so to speak, and go win some games in the NTAs, which they're capable of. You know, they got a great roster. Their coaching staff does a great job, and. So for a couple of weeks, we'll be pirate You'll fans and right. we'll go back to chasing right. them. Right. And it, it, it's always interesting because I'm sure they're following, they, they will be following March Madness. Yep, absolutely. But but it's, it, it seems... Our own bracket. Our yeah. own bracket's not only as important. The, probably only the Whitworth side. Yeah. You know, the g unique thing this year, though, is there's two other teams we played. Northwestern from Minnesota that we beat is mm -hmm. in the tournament. And then Dubuque, or Dubu Dubuque? Dubuque. Dubuque from Iowa that beat us is also in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll keep our attention. I don't mind and as, as a staff, but hey, where are those people? That can kind of show you how far do we got to go to take that next step into the D3 March Madness. Right. And that, that kind of gives you, a, 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 you know, some perspective in that there's yeah. there's three teams in the tournament that, that yep. we've played. Absolutely. And you can kind of see yep. how you match up. Weird. And, uh, you know, none of them are just overwhelmingly right. better than so us in you know, all respects. We said during the week last week was, guys, we're two wins from the NCAA tournament. You know, yeah. That's insane. You know, We didn't get it done, but the fact that we got to that ledge, I think we'd like to take the jump next year. So Super. Well, it was a, it was a great season, and uh, uh, we're, we're excited uh, for next year. We want to thank all the fans, you know, all the different teams. Softball was our sister team, did a bunch of good stuff for us, left us posters, some snack bags, and all the, the football team, track, volleyball, everybody that came to our games. We had a great home floor like you, know, you saw yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that's a testament to all the, all the student athletes out there that came to support us. So thank you. We'll try to re repay you during your seasons as well.
We're here with Miranda Ramirez, softball player from Sunnyville, California. Uh, you had a rough weekend as a team, but you had a two-run homer that helped win that, that one game. And um, Let's talk a little bit about the trip to Whitworth. It's a it's a first conference game, and it's a long trip. How do you guys prepare for that? Um, well, the bus ride there was kind of long, but as a team, we were all really excited and pumped up, and we were really anxious. I know the night before, a lot of us weren't sleeping because we were just waking up like, let's go, let's go. But um, I think we're prepared as, like, we wanted to come out in, like, full force everything with us. So it was definitely our first weekend out. We learned a lot, but we came out like ready to play just we got to work on it good good so the season you've, you've played some good teams yes we have <laughs> and um your record probably doesn't show where you're at as a team um what are you doing to keep motivated to you know knowing that yeah we've, we've lost a lot but we've lost to some really good teams. So how do you keep motivated to know that there's there's brighter times ahead? I think exactly as you said it. We played some really good teams. Um, down in L.A., we played Concordia, one of the best teams down there. And we took it in stride. We learned what we needed to work on, and we saw what we were good at. And seeing those teams only made us better. We learned how we meshed as a team, who needed help where, where others could help us at. And I know it doesn't reflect it with a lot of – the standings, but we're learning a lot, and I think we're taking it in stride, coming up stronger. Well, you, you guys are also dealing with a, a coaching dynamic that's that's been in flux. You know, it's weird not seeing Damo around as much, but obviously Kelly stepped up and is in charge of the program. Are there differences in style of play people will notice now, or is it the same philosophy the Bear, Bearcat softball has always had on the diamond? You know, are you guys the same close-knit group off that you've always been? Talk a little bit about the, the coaching change and w what it's meant for you guys. The coaching change was definitely hard for us. We Never want to lose a coach middle of mm -hmm. season, middle of the year. But Kelly came in full force. She has done everything she can to make our team better. Um, off the field, we're, we're really close this year. Honestly, it's one of the closest I've been with the team mm -hmm. in the three years here. Um, on the field, we push each other. We keep going after it. The coaches push us. I know it's a new dynamic. We have Kelly with us. Nikki Newman came mm -hmm. back. Dave, a former coach of Willamette, came back. And... They are doing everything they can to keep this team going strong, keep us trying to get to conference, even to regionals. And so you have your home opener this weekend, mm -hmm. and I actually had to park out at the softball field today. <laughs> so I saw all the work. The field looks great. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. We have a new warning track, which I can't even explain how grateful <laughs> I am for. As an outfielder, it's so nice to have that. Um, we had Catherine Moore's dad coming out here every day, rolling the field, um, getting work done on our outfield, pitching mount, everything. It looks great. It feels great. And honestly, it makes us feel good about ourselves, knowing that we have a university behind us that wants us to have a good location and to be good ball players. Yeah, I, I, I noticed, uh, I was out there yesterday, and I was like, oh, the field, look, field looks nice. And then I came in today, and they're out there doing, they're doing yeah, more I work, know. and they're cutting more stuff. And it's, it's, I mean, it, it does. It looks fantastic. And I know... Um, not being a baseball softball person, I was always confused why home plate was lower than any other plate, and uh, that's no longer the case. <laughs> no, nope. it's, no, it's no longer in a hole. We right. had to fix everything. We had to dig it out of the ground, pull it back up. We had to retill the ground, which hasn't been done in years, I guess. And playing on it these last two weeks, when the sunshine was out, mm -hmm. it's been amazing. I couldn't even begin to explain how much nicer it is to be able to play on that kind of dirt. For people that haven't been out to you guys, you know, seen you guys play over the time at Willamette, talk about a doubleheader format. You know, you guys, f first of all, there's a whole other thing. We don't have to go sweep the floor before we play in a basketball <laughs> game. You guys are out there working. Talk about, you know, when oh. do you have to get there? I know there's tables set up for food in between games. Just give us a, walk us through a day in the life of softball when, the, when you guys are at home against Pacific. So our normal game times are 12 and 2 for any softball program, but we honestly get out there around 8.30 or 9.00. Um, taking swings early, doing grounders, and obviously Pacific Northwest, it rains mm -hmm. a lot. So there have been times where we're out there at 9, putting quick dry, putting turf it down on our field for over an hour, trying to rake it out, get the mud out, and we'll play in the mud. It's <laughs> something California teams aren't prepared for, like yeah. when we went down there. So we usually have that. It's an hour and a half of warm-ups, which is 
it gets you tired before a game. Mm -hmm. And then you have your actual game, and that's close to three hours of just grueling. You're going full speed all the time. You are trying to make adjustments in the middle of the game to, like, help your team out. And then after first game, you get about 20 minutes, get something quick to eat, get your swings in if you need help, do it all over again. And it's What's the rough. meal of choice between games? What do you got? Is it is it seniors get a pick? Under uh, who who decides? Pitchers and catchers go first, okay. obviously. Okay. They need it. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of need them most in games most yeah. of the time. Um, but our meals of choice are usually bagels with some sort of peanut butter okay, okay. or cream cheese on it. Yeah. And then we have our little snack desserts, which are usually M and M's and goldfish. I like it. I like it. I can get on board with that. Yeah. So it's an interesting dynamic, and it's quick. It's fast. You got to keep on going. Can't eat too much, or it'll drag you down. Mm -hmm. Can't not eat, even if you're upset with your play, because you got to get ready for mm -hmm. the next game and let it go. So. It's grueling, and it's hard, but it's so much fun when you're is in it. Is each person's song ready for when you go up to the plate? Because that, I think, is the coolest <laughs> thing. Well, I, I can tell you that <laughs> oh, you've been working on that, it. That, yes, that, like yes it. each person's walk-up song is ready. I think we need that for free throws. Well, Every time Bubba goes to the free throw line, there's a song. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Wouldn't that be sweet? It'd be really cool because the fans all get into I it. I love And the we song. have cheers for the boys. Really? So we always are like, oh, come on. Yeah. If there was a song. Oh, it'd be out of hand. We're on to something. We're yeah. on to maybe, something. We should, maybe we should we we'll start talk to that. The we'll, we'll talk about that it. Here. Now, speaking of songs, while I'm compiling the list of mm -hmm. songs for softball, yeah. I said, you know, give me your walk-up music, give me your warm-up music. Yeah. They've given me eight hours worth of warm-up <laughs> music. <laughs> So I like it. You guys are specific. <laughs> it messes with your routine if the song's wrong, right? Well, it, everyone has, like, their own jam. Right. And we have stuff from Spanish salsa music oh to God. country to extreme hip-hop. Yeah. And you can't just not play it because, like, some kids get warmed up. Uh -huh. and some kids are like, all right, come on, move right. on. So we have to add a little bit of everything to get everyone into it's it. Huge. And honestly, it's a little fun. If you ever come out and watch our warm-ups, uh -huh. Uh, if we have the music going, you'll see the Audis, which is what I'm a part of. Okay. We have dances going on. I we like got, it. like, high-five dances. Well, you guys are to in energy is an understatement at softball games. That's oh, kind yeah. of a, pre, a pre prerequisite, I think, to be there. Exactly. So let's, let's change gears a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about academics um, and Willamette in general. What made you come to Willamette? Um... I would definitely say softball was a key thing, but this school gave me so many opportunities to be more like academically sound and want to better myself than my high school had. And when I was coming into college, I had offers from other schools and they just weren't what I wanted academically. They couldn't give me that support I needed here. And being a part of the softball team, we're on trips a lot. We're gone a lot. And this school is so helpful to be when we're on the road, they give us resources, they give us tutors, they give us time, they give us understanding, and that's most important. And it's nice to come back and have one-on-ones with your teachers in such small classes that I can still stay ahead of the game, and I can be doing great in school and great in softball. Speaking of doing great in school, what are you doing great in school at? What's your major? I'm an exercise science major, um, psychology minor, and I'm hoping to use that to go into nursing. So. Oh, wow. My favorite kind of things are a lot of our science, anatomy, human phys. I'm in motor learning, which is tough, but it's so interesting. It makes me want to be a part of it and learn more. So that's kind of the stuff I, I really thrive on, mm -hmm. and that's something our school does great is giving me the opportunity to learn that kind of thing. Do you find, you know, on our, our squad, it's kind of, I don't think people out there that aren't student athletes understand, it's almost easier in season because you have such a regimented schedule to get your homework done. Is that the same for, for you and the softball team? Because my guys, if it's not season, they're off all over the place, and i got to corral. What, what, what's it like for you? Well, my freshman year I came in, and our team is very structured, and a lot of the upperclassmen hold you accountable. They're, they're with you every day, texting you every night. Hey, do you need anything? Do you want anything? So I had a lot of structure then, but in season, you're right. I have practice at a certain time, so I had to plan my day out. Mm -hmm. I have to know what hours I have available to study, when I can get things done, when I can take my rest. Yeah. What you got to have. Yes. <laughs> Six days a week. So you said you, you want to go into nursing. So after Willamette, you're going to go to grad school, nursing school? Yes. And then what? Um, a, a nurse in a hospital, an ER? My uh, ultimate <laughs> goal is to be a intensive care pediatric nurse, so in the PICU. And if not, I want to go into oncology, nursing. Um, I had a shadow internship at OHSU one day, and it was amazing to see the kids and to interact with them. 
and I'm very good with kids. I a lot of my jobs around school and at home revolve around them. So I want to go into something that I can help them with and probably make somebody's life a little better in their future. And I think that that seems to be a common theme amongst Willamette mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, it's the not alone unto yep. yourself are you born that comes out. And uh, I, I think a lot of our student Absolutely. athletes, and it's not so much I want this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want to help. help. Honestly, yeah. our whole team has that dynamic. Um, a lot of us want to go into careers, sociology, psychology, health. There's a lot of us that want to go out and help other people before we help ourselves. And that's one of the main things that I love about our team is that no matter what, where you're at in life, what you're doing, what you're struggling with, they are there for you no matter what, and they will help you get through it. Super. Awesome. Now let's switch back real quick. We got Pacific coming up this weekend um, at home on Saturday, and then George Fox on Sunday. Um, where where do we stand? Are those are we going to win those games? I mean, what's are they good teams? Don't let him trap you in a prediction. <laughs> yeah, what I are I yeah. <laughs> no, what are keys to winning? What are keys yeah, to what winning? Well, Pacific this Saturday, we are going to be revved up for. That is one of those teams that we just want to come out and absolutely just stick it to them. And it's even more interesting because the coach is there. We all know. We've all been with them before and we just want to prove ourselves and especially with Damian gone Kelly mm -hmm. in here she wants it just as bad and I think we're gonna this whole week we have to prepare we're all focused we all have the high energy that we always do the talk so hopefully we come into this weekend with that same energy and we put it to them but you can never know what's gonna happen you can just prepare as best as you can so we got Plan Pacific mm -hmm. has their coach come up in any of your conversations um, Liz, <laughs> I mean, she for those that you don't, yeah, for those that don't know, uh, Liz is a, a former, as a Willamette alum, a former coach. player yeah. and coach, yes. uh, and and is taking the head head job uh, at Pacific. This is her second year now, I believe. Yes. Um, well, obviously, we all know Liz. We love Liz. She was there with us through a lot of things my freshman year, and her being on the other side, it's going to be fun. We're going to have our little antics and little push here and there, but. Ultimately, we're going in like, we don't mm -hmm. know you. Right. It's going to happen. And honestly, their coaching staff is all previous alums from Willamette as well. So it's going to be a head-to-head -head battle for sure. They are going to want to show us what they're made of, mm -hmm. and we want to come out fighting and show them that they can't. it's not going to happen. And Especially You here. can't take our That's coaches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and then George Fox on Sunday. And uh, George Fox has traditionally been our opener. And that kind of changed up this year. Um, so I, I imagine you're you're looking at George Fox similar to obviously you don't want to get ahead of Pacific, but um, just going in and, and doing what you normally do and, and try and knock them off. Or yeah, we want to come out strong. Um, first game of the day, you you got to prove it to yourself that you want it just as much. And I think not overlooking Pacific, but going to George Fox, it's going to be the same deal. Everyone's a rival. Nobody. You can't leave anyone out, even if you think they're a weak mm -hmm. team or they're the strongest team. Um, you have to come out like they're your rival, and you need the win. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us. Good uh, luck this weekend. Good luck this Thank weekend. You. Check out softball at home just over the, the railroad tracks uh, on Saturday versus Pacific at 12-2. and two. All right, looking ahead on the calendar this week at uh, Willamette. Uh, men's tennis, Puget Sound and Pacific Lutheran this weekend. Are those here? Those are both here. Those are both here. 4 p.m. Friday against the Loggers, 1 p.m. Saturday against the Lutes. Uh, track and field opens. That's always yep. exciting time uh, for the Bearcats out on uh, throwing and jumping and running. Uh, Saturday, 10 a.m., the Willamette opener. Uh, you probably got a little couple more details. A lot of teams is an individual. It's a, it's a small, quick meet. Small, quick meet. Um, so if you want to watch some track, this would probably be a good one because it's the the schedule is condensed and it go quick. It go quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, women's tennis is on the road. They flip flop with the men there in Tacoma to play PLU Saturday at one. Puget Sound Sunday at 10. Baseball's here. PLU Saturday. Double header starts at 11. Sunday's a single game at 1. But all, get, get out and see Coach Swick and the team. They're rolling 12 and 1, 5 and 1. Uh, are tied for first place? Uh, I, I would assume so. Yeah, right up right at, at least the top. tied or, yep. or at 1. But they're, um, yeah. And then also the, the softball team. They're opening this weekend at home Saturday at 12 p.m. So if you got both days, you can catch either the soft on Saturday, you can catch baseball one game, then run on over to softball or vice versa. Baseball tends to go a little longer. Yeah, baseball yeah. tends. I would yeah, go there last. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes. but yeah, there's. Th th I mean, there's. 
softball on Saturday. Softball, baseball, and track, track, and tennis. You can catch all, all of home. them right here. The sun should be out. I haven't it, seen the weather. According to the weather, it's it's supposed to be nice. It's going to be a great day to get out, support the spring sports. We're rolling full speed ahead. Um, and that's the week on tap for the for Willamette Athletics. Yeah, let's wrap things up. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, for another week of Cat Chat. Check us out on social media, bit.ly slash social. Uh, check us out. Uh, watch some of our – we've got softball and baseball. Okay. Uh, you can watch those live uh, on the Bearcat Network, bit.ly slash Where are you working? Bearcat Network. Track. I will be at track. Running all the yeah. Da gadgets. Yeah. yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, until next week, uh, we'll see you later.